Uh, yeah, hello guys. So yeah, today I want to talk with you about my possible architecture. And uh, I think we will start from far away. I think it will be a data flow. I'm not sure if we need it actually, but yeah, <laughs> let's do it. I think it's important to understand difference between these two data flow. So first one is directional, uh, bidirectional data flow actually. I think everybody familiar with this, uh, yeah. So this diagram, it's not about NBC actually, it's about bidirection data flow. Uh, what is actually exact? It's when we have crossroad reference between each layer uh, and each layer can communicate between each other. So for example, controller can communicate with model and model have fell back to controller. And the same thing is actually uh, view. Um, they have crossroad reference and yeah, they can communicate. The most common issue with this, we can have a lot of these controllers. It can be, I don't know, for example, a P controller, it can be a Bluetooth low energy controller, it can be any third party controller. And uh, we have a lot of this fallback reference and sometimes pretty hard to debug. Uh, yeah, you can say that it's not always. We have a different approach uh, beside MVC. It can be clean architecture, it can be Viper, MVP, and so on. But uh, all of them have uh, communication between uh, each layer. So they have this fallback from one layer to another one. Uh, and sometimes, yeah, as I told before, it's uh, hard to debug. Uh, for union direction architecture, have a little bit different approach. Uh, they it don't have fallback reference, as you saw on previous slide. The whole flow is working by a circle. As you can see, it's common diagram actually. It's you view generate some action, action go to reducer, reducer uh, accumulates this action and do something with it and change store and store notify you about any changes. If somebody actually work with Redux, we uh, usually have this middle bar here that work with uh, async task. Uh, it's easy. It's a little bit easy to debug because you know the whole flow, uh, and if something wrong with uh, actual logic, you can go to reducer and check our logic here. Uh, and the same with actually storage just state changes the action. Uh, yeah, so it just. Uh, about different between two approach. So uh, let's go to composable architecture. Uh, composable architecture is one of the example of unidirectional architecture. Uh, so yeah, we had this slide before. Uh, unfortunately, it had it has some limitation. Um, it's depend from combine and actually CFTI. Um, Meaning on deploy target, it's iOS sort of format, but uh, since iOS 15 has been released, I think it shouldn't be an issue for us. Uh, uh, yeah, it also has feedback from Reactive Swift and Rick Swift, but in this topic, we will not observe it. Uh, so let's talk about composable architecture, what it's exact. Uh, and a lot about it. Actually, as you uh, remember from previous slide, right? Uh, Unidirection architecture. First of all, it's statement management. Uh, it's much easier to work with this uh, because only when one state change, we can easily notify the whole application about it. Uh, we don't need to send any fallback uh, feedback from it, go back to the another layer, we can easily just change it and reduce a little handle for us. Uh, composition, it's yeah, it's about that we can easily uh, 
separate big feature to some small part, it, it will be isolated from the our whole application. Uh, yeah, the one more thing, it's side effect. What is actually side effects? It's any that can be, uh, that we can get from out our application. It can be uh, a pillar, it can be some sort of party library and so on. We can easily test it. Uh, you will see it in examples. And yeah, testing, I think I have already talked about it. It's very easy to test because uh, guys provide uh, some things that allow our to easy to test some feature and some things. Yeah, uh, I think I forgot at all about it. That composable architecture it actually framework from the Git. Uh, guys was inspired from unidirectional architecture from Redux and yeah, create uh, own architecture to Swift UI. And ergonomics, it's uh, how we can uh, do, how we can change our application uh, and move only a few things. We don't need to rebuild whole application, for example, the uh, API layer or something, something another. <laughs> For example, we change protocol and we need to go to the whole application and change uh, all function with this. Uh, it's diagram for composable architecture. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty similar to uh, unidirection architecture. Let's back to it maybe. Yeah, here is view action reduce store. It's actually pretty similar. We have view action reducer. Uh, we have additional layer here, store, uh, and all of them, it's actually a state. We have additional layer state here, and all of them, it's actually store. Uh, we have two additional things. It's environment. Environment actually is dependency injection, uh, injection for our reducer. Uh, it can be our certified library, IP, or something else. Uh, for example, once we got some action from view, we get in the reducer, reducer go to environment, environment have reference to, for example, uh, Spotify client, right? Uh, it's do it work, back it to reducer. Uh, reducer don't uh, go to the state because it's need to map it to another uh, effects. Uh, Everything that we got actually from environment is the site effects. So it will remap FX to new one action and go to the reducer again. Only this, only after this, uh, reducer will go to the state and state will notify views that uh, it need update actually UI for this. Yeah, actually on the slider, it's pretty the same that I told before. Uh, so yeah, state is described how our UI will render action. It's uh, any actions that we can go from anywhere, your notification, third party sync, and so on. Yeah, environment, it's dependency, reducer, um, reducer handle any action before it go to the store and it can remap it to uh, any new action or change store if needed. Yeah, actually, so it's changed everything in our right time. Uh, so, yeah, here is an example of what is actually view. I get this uh, piece, of, piece of code from our example. Uh, as you can see, we have store. Store has such state and such action. As you can see, here is action and state. One of the interesting things, it's uh, this store. It's uh, view that is handled from uh, view protocol and it uh, should be needed with store. Why we need it? Uh, because once store change, we need to update our UI. Uh, guys also provide a lot of things like for each store, if store, if you don't need to update the whole UI in this case, we can use them. Uh, one story will change, this part of the code will be triggered. If you will have some part of the code above of this, this store, it will not trigger. 
after store changed. Uh, yeah, here we have actually our action state and such action. Uh, yeah, it's code from example. Uh, we have few action. Uh, we have only five action here. And yeah, such action, some response, play track, and so on. Uh, I think you will, it will be more clear after demo. Uh, yeah, and most interesting thing, it's actually a reducer. Uh, reducer have fallbacks from state, action, and environment. Once it gets some action, it can communicate with it. For example, in this here environment, Spotify clients, we try such a song, it have reference to client. And it's cast it to some effect. So it's a song response. As you remember from this side, right? We have environment, go here to reduce and reduce to remap it to new action. Uh, right. Yeah, so here catch the effects and we remap these effects to our response. And here we have uh, get response. We go fell back to the section. It can be tracked or we can get error. Error right now, I don't handle actually. Uh, yeah, so it was uh, last slide. So I think um, we can go to the demo maybe. Uh, I wrote a tiny demo. So let's look what it actually do. Or uh, yeah, maybe somebody have question at this level right now. Can you maybe suggest some uh, benefits that the given architecture offers us to us in uh, comparison to other? Yeah, of course. Um, so. Uh, I think we can. Uh, I think we can find few issue right now for SwiftUI. First issue, it's code style because SwiftUI is still pretty modern. Uh, first thing, it's provide a one style for the pod action. So, uh, you know, you know how to write code, right? And it has one style. The second one, it was one of the slides, it's state management. You can easily uh, manage the state in the application. Uh, for example, we have store and one store change, we can notify the whole application. We don't need to go the fallbacks and so on. And I think one more thing, it's the stability. Uh, because it's pretty hard to test if UI right now. Uh, yeah, if somebody know good approach to test Swift UI, you can write me and we can discuss it. And I think one more thing, it's a uh, property wrapper right now. We have a lot of property wrapper in Swift UI like state, observed object, published there, and so on. And usually we pretty hard to work with them. For example, to write the same uh, API layer, we need to write additional wrapper, wrapper for it, view model or something like this, yeah. And work with the state, they're not super, uh, that's not super easy to debug them actually. To use this, uh, to use this approach, uh, it's much more clear to work with this. Uh, do you answer to a question actually? Mm, we, uh, <laughs> uh, probably yes, probably yes. To this truth, I uh, don't have enough experience with Swift UI. And looking at this code, to me, it looks quite complex. And uh, it just came to my mind uh, what is the benefit of uh, uh, using these technologies which uh, which makes code a bit complex that it could be? Uh, actually, no. Maybe it's look uh, a little bit complex at the first sight. Uh, 
Uh, but now, for example, uh, maybe let's say launch, yeah, demo. Uh, actually, this demo, it's take a few lines of the code, as you can see here. And this approach, it's much clearer. Right now, for example, you will have uh, from classic way, you will have a lot of here variable that with that stay or uh, so on. Uh, and you need to manage all the state. For example, you have 10 state here and you need to manage them. It's not super convenient as for me. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, thank you. But right now we have only one thing store that can be changed. And once it's changed, you can notify the whole application about this. Um, in the classic way, you will have a sync observer object publisher, right? And you will need to send a lot of property to another view to handle with this. Yeah, and uh, here it's another question. If you allow uh, it uh, to ask, so uh, what if my state could, could be huge? Not only, for example, 10, 15 uh, properties, but much more, like in real projects, like in enterprise projects, for example. Will it handle it with the same easy? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, it will be pretty easy because you can remap any action to another one. So in the here, in the right now we have action, right? So it's five action, and it's not take a lot of place in the code as you can see. Uh, you, if you need a lot of action, for example, I don't know, ten. 50 action, you can decompose it to more small view, right? And create separate uh, reducer for each this view, right? So it's just, it's fell back to the solid, for example. Uh, you can create, right, one class, one view for it, and you can create separate uh, action for it. A separate action, separate to user, and so on. And yeah, in this example, you will not see, unfortunately, in this, I didn't think about it. But uh, once you create new view, you will share the same store for it. So uh, the same store for whole application, right? Yeah, it's have, uh -huh. uh, yeah. It's, I, I think I forgot to mention about it. Uh, it have uh, this approach, it have only one store in whole application. Uh, and you can remap it uh, from one store to another one. It's, I don't remember actually, the, it's uh, navigation link. Uh, yeah, actually, I don't remember right now, but it's pretty easy. Actually, this can... uh, right now it's, yeah, few lines of code and um, I forgot one of all what I want to say. <laughs> Uh, probably I was quite uh, earlier with questions. Probably you can uh, show the demo now in action. Uh, yes. So maybe I, I will break, I will set breakpoints somewhere, right? Let's just uh, see what I do right now. It's pretty simple and small. It's, we have such track, such screen and such track. Um, it's connect to Spotify IP. It will find any track with a 30 second demo. For example, let's find Johnny. Cash. Yeah, so it's find some track. Once we do, once we press to it, it will play track actually. It have back if uh, 30 seconds will finish. Uh, <laughs> I don't change actually in this case. I need, I used a player here, but a player it's done. Get, I don't have fell back from a player once track finished actually. Uh, so, yeah, as you can see, we have here a text field and we have view store. View store have method bin. View store have initiated with state and action. And we should just provide what property we should absorb. absorb. It should be such query in our case. Let's go to it and slip it. Yeah, we have state here. 
we have three stage and one such query will be changed it will remap it to action it will be such query action as you can see uh, once it will change we will go here we will go actually to such changes here we have fell back to spotify client it's actually environment uh, yeah here is environment uh, any schedule of it's actually uh, array type of um, schedule that's classic way of swift ui it's wrapper for any task it can be operation it can be dispatch it can be i don't know it can be run loop we can wrap anything actually here uh, it's have reference to uh, two dependency here one of them it's audio player and second one is client uh, spotify client uh yeah and let's try to change something here ah yeah i don't want to so yeah here we have a binding here and once it's change being over here we have our and query and uh, we have such song actually yeah i don't show clients look like this right now it's a spotify api i created uh yeah it's tiny hat <laughs> that's a use to authorize to avoid uh, additional logic here but let's keep it right for now <laughs> Uh, Spotify uh, P client has method such category. We just map it to tracks. I don't handle error right now, actually, here. And we have arrays to effect. Arrays to effects. Uh, yeah, we work with effects at the environment level. Uh, maybe let's back to the screen. To the slider. Yeah. So effects, it's this part. So environment was uh, back uh, effect was actually effect is the same thing as a publisher. I just inherited from it. You can do it. Yeah. As you can see, actually, it's the same thing as a publisher. It, uh, they just provide additional uh, wrappers that we can wrap, uh, that we can wrap everything actually to effect why we need it. Effect just have additional, uh, effect have additional uh, methods that allow to work with this architecture for us. Um, yeah, so what is happening actually? We go here, client, we try to fetch song, uh, wait, uh, wait a little while, and then we try to see it in the main queue and we remap it to the uh, response. We have uh, here tracks, and you can see it's return effects, right? So, effects in our case, it will be response, it's third party things that we don't detect actually in our app right now and once we change uh yeah and after this we will trigger this part once in change as you can see uh, we just need update state once change change uh, state change actually we will render our ui so this part will trigger uv store actually will be triggered uh, yeah, and it's much easier to do it with uh, Swift UI than with uh, UI Kit. I'm pretty sure you will spend much more code to write the same thing. Here. Um, yes, so, and a few words about the actual tests. Uh, one of the things I like here 
it's actually a test because uh, we have tests from the box actually we don't uh, do some additional thing here the uh, guys provide for us the store and we can uh, need it with things that we need uh, right now actually in spotify client we have your extension it's failing uh, cases it's me it's uh, for test it's uh, just actually it's uh, it's just uh, just <laughs> uh, from combine as you can see uh, let's go here no, no. let's go here yeah so yeah it do some work uh, we have publisher and we create just here just set failure case here and compact and trace perfect uh yeah actually how it's work right now we just create store it's almost the same thing that we do in real project and uh, here we have environment spotify we just uh, use mock objects i create a few things here uh, and how it work actually when we we try to send uh, this text to our store to our reducer and it expects that string will be equal to the uh, this one legend never dies so for example in our case all tests will the past but if you will not update uh, store in our case uh, it will told that we don't have uh it don't have expected string right now we don't need to check anything we don't need uh write any assertion state and so on and we totally evolved yeah as you can see it's failed right now because we don't update the stage right now such where such where is equal to uh empty string but we expect it should be a legend never die if we will update the store in this case everything will be okay so yeah as you can see to write test for ip layer it's actually take few line of the codes i actually don't think you will be able to do it it's the same thing uh, with any ui kit approach or another thing actually if i am wrong yeah <laughs> i open to discussion uh, yeah, I think you have a lot of questions. <laughs> so, yes. Actually, I have a question or questions, I don't know. So I didn't have direct experience with this, but what about performance of this architecture? Because very often I could hear like, for example, Redux with their reducer if we extend their actions uh, in some moment it caused some problem with performance exactly in the state when we pro process some action but what about here how it works do we have some problem with performance or is it managed in some way uh actually right now it's have a little bit slow performance and ui kit i tested but uh, it's even not related, I think, to, uh, yeah, so um, let's I think about it. Yeah, first of all, it's, uh, at any case, it's certified part uh, library, right? This approach and it have some additional uh, logic and code at any time. Uh, at any case, it will take some time. Mm -hmm. uh, I also add, uh, this moment uh swift ui not ls property render action mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yeah it has a lot of sync from out of box we can easily do some animation we can do uh some additional stink uh if you will write some easy application without, without no uh, additional effects without no animation and so on uh swift ui will be faster yes mm -hmm. but if you will try to do some um, hard sync like hard animation additional layer 
uh, for my management, Swift UI right now slow. In some case, in some case, Swift UI work uh, much better than UI Kit. If, but we have if if it work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um... But sometimes Swift UI do some a lot of bad things. <laughs> for me. They have a lot of additional uh, loaders. As I remember, they write. Uh, Image load. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's brought I think image load. I think yeah, actually I don't remember how it's called right now. They have something like a sync image loader. They even not able to manage a lazy grid view because okay. it's all time mesh images between different cell. Mm -hmm. So I have to write my own solution for this. Okay. Can you open your presentation uh, with this diagram where we can see the state? Yeah, like here. And what I know, actually, the state, it's one for full application. Yeah. yeah. And exactly, it looks like when we call some action on reducer, we take previous state and try to generate next state. And this effect error, it's a little bit confuse me it looks like from one action we can create some another action and one uh, more yeah, call yeah. on the reducer and it looks like some circle <laughs> uh no it's not actually not circle uh unfortunately i don't have this here actually i don't remember uh exactly how it's work right now actually we can create additional uh yeah, and one of the additional layer issues of the Swift UI is after completion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another work right now is the same thing that was from the Swift, the first version of the Swift right now. Yeah, uh, actually, yeah we have sync. Uh, I don't remember the exact uh, name of the methods here. We can uh, remap our global store, let's mm -hmm. call it global store, to new one store, we can remap it at a local store. Okay. We Just... have uh, additional function for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. but if after completion will work, I can. Uh, okay. And only last question: uh, What about modules? If we create some modules in our project, because I don't know, we have a lot of functionality and we try to separate in different parts. How to how this architecture works in this way? Because in this case, we have to share the state to these modules in some way. I don't know uh, how to implement this interaction or this architecture has some supports for this. I don't know. They have uh, some. I, I'm not sure that I understand you correct. You mean we have uh, few More. models? We can have models that should be shared between separate, between a few screen, right? No, our application contains a few modules, like one module for, I don't know, some store data, uh, another module for store data for Amazon. And uh, in different feature, we try to use functionality from these modules. Our application is combine these modules. Do we, do we can share the state to this module? Because I know that Another big enterprise project try to resolve this problem because the state like can it share to the sub uh, sub functionality. Uh, I think I understood you. Uh, yes. Yeah, so as I told before, we have the store one store, right? <laughs> Actually, we always work with only one store. Yep. And it's can remap it to any local uh, store. So. It will be the same thing, but uh, yeah, after, I don't remember it right now, but after completion, don't allow me to show you. Okay. It can remap it to new store, it will be local store, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, for example, let's imagine that it's up layer store, not mm -hmm. Sajri, it's up layer store. Okay. Uh, up layer store have uh, reference to, uh, actually, let's, uh, let's try to, uh it have reference to another store for example for this such content view store mm -hmm. this fallback okay. and it will be it will have a lot of uh 
sub stores something like yeah, that. sub stores and uh, actually we work with the root store in mm. the last time and once uh, it changed it will be notified all another store sub store okay okay thank you uh yeah i i think i should to show it but yeah i didn't think about it actually sorry for this okay thank you yeah but actually you're right uh, it's just demo it's look good easy but at any case when you test it on real projects i am pretty sure it will be a lot of uh, issues on real projects uh actually i am not sure how it will look uh, yeah, as I told before about substore, we will have a lot of these substores in a one place. So it's <laughs> just one file with ton of these substores. It can be one hundred, maybe even even more. But yeah, I think it will be substore for each domain layer for each tab I see. Because yeah, they can one. If you will have, I think, few tab, right? Tab bar with five tabs. I think it will have five substores, and the substores will have additional uh, substores and so on. And also, yeah, one of the issue I can image imagine here it's uh, this reducer. For example, if you will have table view with a lot of rows, for example, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, it will be a lot of boiler codes that we need just to map all of the state and navigate it. So, yeah, I, I also have this question, but I don't have right now answer to it. This reducer can be pretty big in some cases, mm -hmm. but from other side, it's don't take a lot of place. It's pretty readable as for me. So, and we, I think we can try to uh, decompose it to more small reducer views and so on. Yeah, it will be the case when there's yeah, a lot of items, we don't have choice, we will force the navigation, yeah. table view with 50 rows and we need right navigation to the, each of them. But, I think the same issue will be with the UI kit, right? You have table view, you press to it, you not handle some somehow it. In most likely case, you will have uh, an arm with it, and you will just go one by one and check where I need to go. Maybe another question connected to the performance. Uh, but uh, to the performance of the view itself, there is a object with uh, which is named like with this view or something. Can, can you please scroll a little bit? Yeah, with view store. Uh, so the question is, for example, if you have a publisher like standard way, which is uh, owned by the model, so the uh, Swift UI can optimize and reload only part of views needs to be reloaded. And the question is how how the logic is done in this case because I imagine if we uh, will change, for example, one property, the whole um, view might be reloaded. Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, yeah, I tried to show it, but Swift it's after completion again and work. Yeah, in this case, it just view the store, but uh, I think I mentioned below. Uh, we have a lot of other. Uh, yeah, don't show it here. Uh, we have another wrapper here. It can be only uh, I'm not sure if I write it correct. For example, if you don't need to render some um, part, you can now uh, like this. Uh, okay, it's yeah, I mean, after complete don't work today for me. If let's store, yeah, something that we need. Yeah, it's something we you can absorb only one property. For example, if let's store, right? 
for example, if uh, cannot convert to actually, uh, we have a lot of these items, they override a lot of them. If you need to observe only one property, for example, uh, query in our case, uh, you can observe only on lead. Yep. So you can remove the, uh, you can remove this at all, right? To, to be an error for me, and it's more property way in our case. I can observe uh, view store is empty here, and if it will change, uh, store here. Yeah. If I I get able to check it, and it will uh, render only this all. It looks good. Thank you. Uh, maybe one more question. Um, uh, just interesting to see how the ownership is done. Uh, for example, it would be um, great to see the place where search content view is constructed, like how you pass in the parameters, where Redux is passed as a parameter. Uh, such content, uh, doing, ah, it's in the here. Yeah, we have oh, okay. here and we just need, we, uh, we have such reducer. Yeah, and one of the things that I'm not properly understand it's uh, this reducer. Uh, because uh, they all should be public. <laughs> because we need somehow in it and it always uh, should accept reducer for the need. Uh, all reducers should be public here. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. interesting. This correlates with the question to the modules where you need to like define some things like states, for example, to be internal, and some like in the top level module up. This can be public. In this case, like all reducers will be public despite with the module. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, right. We, we need this reducer because we need it in the test. We need to need this environment somehow. Uh, but actually, I'm expecting that it should be private or something like this. I'm not sure. It was my expectation, actually. <laughs> At least internal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... Okay, thank you. I also checked the repository for this uh, architecture and it looks like it doesn't have reported issues, which is great news. <laughs> uh, actually, I don't know. There's a, it's still done at uh, release, as I understood, because <laughs> they have zero to it's actually not sure. Is there some information about using this one in a production? Uh, actually, yeah, I know guys that use it actually in production right now, uh, but it's not super big application. It's application for bicycle. You can arrange them. Uh, uh, right now, classic application actually yeah, just rent bicycle from any place and go there. Uh, on this project, actually, it show show it pretty good. Guys, don't found any problem. It's super testable right now. Uh, um, but it's interesting to test it in some very big project. In this case, I think we will face with some issue actually. Uh, ah, yeah, I think it should be guys from Point Three create this architecture and uh, they use it actually in some in their project. I don't remember how it's called, and it should be a pretty big project. Yeah. And they create this architecture actually. Cool. Thanks for answers and for the presentation. It was interesting. Yeah, but uh, any case, until you will not work with it yourself on big project, I think it's still black box. 